Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Byzantium for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. If you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 30% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So Byzantium, does it really need an introduction? No, we're a nation located mainly in the Balkans, these three provinces in southern Greece and we own Constantinople. We're basically one of the last remnants of the Roman Empire, well along with Trebizond, but uh, let's not get into that. And well, historically, we're about to get wiped out by the Ottomans. Now Byzantium is still a pretty difficult start even though the Ottomans have been nerfed to the ground since 1.30 Emperor, but by using this guide you will have no problems taking care of the Ottomans in a non-RNG fashion. So you're not gonna need to restart 17 times, nothing like that. So this is our situation right now. We start off with a subject in Athens and cores on all of these provinces in the Balkans. And our first war of course has to be against the Ottomans. Sure you could declare on Epirus first, but uh, they're not our main problem right now. The Ottomans are, so we'll take care of Epirus later. Now the first thing we're going to do is summon the Diet and you can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Next we're going to give the clergy religious state and clerical advisory council. We're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility and increased levies, along with aristocratic counselors. We're going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board and indebted to the burghers. Next we're gonna activate the encourage development in Constantinople and dev once in Diplo. Now we're gonna sell titles and seize land. Next we're gonna hire a Diplo rep or improve relations guy if you have him. I have a level 2 Diplo rep guy and I will take him only until I get an alliance I need though. Then I will be firing him. And I'm gonna start improving relations with Albania and building a spy network on the Ottomans. We're not gonna rival anyone at this point. We're gonna take this 8k stack, delete these two horses and take these 6k guys over to Morea. Next we're also gonna start construction on some ships. We're gonna build a heavy ship in Constantinople and in Ahea and we're gonna build two galleys in Morea and two more galleys in Corinth. Shout out to Budget Monk for this shipbuilding strategy by the way. We're also gonna build six infantry regiments in Athens. Now it's time to wait for us to be able to ally Albania and for our troops and ships to finish building. Don't make any claims with this spy network on the Ottomans because we need it in order to speed up sieges. We don't really need claims, we have cores. At this point we're also gonna lower army maintenance and fleet maintenance and turn off our forts. And there we go, it's only been a couple of months and I can ally Albania. At this point I am gonna fire this Diplo rep guy and you should fire your Diplo rep guy or improve relations guy if you have him. If you don't, it's only gonna take you like two or three more months to ally Albania, so it's totally not necessary. Also, when your troops keep building in Athens, keep moving them down to Morea. Of course once they get enough morale to be able to actually move. Now once your heavy ship in Constantinople has been built, you are gonna wanna recruit two more infantry regiments in Constantinople. And once all of your ships have finished building, we're gonna take all of them to the Sea of Marmara. And we're also gonna move this 12k stack to Corinth and get ready to hire some mercenary companies, like the Free Company, the High Dukes, and get some more loans if you can't hire all of them and the Stradiotti, for example. And we're also gonna activate our forts, as well as the defensive edict in Constantinople. We're also gonna hire a discipline or morale advisor if you have him. If you don't have him, it's not a big deal. I do have a discipline guy, so I am gonna hire him. Now, we're waiting for the mercenary stacks and the infantry regiments in Constantinople. And we're gonna raise army maintenance and fleet maintenance as well. At this point, we're also gonna hire an admiral for our navy and make sure friendly fleets can attach. And we're also gonna hire a general for our main army comprised of 12k infantry. At this point you need to make sure that your navy is in the Sea of Marmara. Two separate infantry regiments are in Constantinople and the 12k stack along with three mercenary companies comprised of 4k infantry regiments are in Athens. We're also gonna make Athens supportive and make them attach to well whichever mercenary company you want. And once it's May 1st 1447 or whichever month which has 31 days such as January or March for example, it's time to declare on the Ottomans. At this point you will notice that they have mothballed forts such as the one in Salonik, in Gallipoli and in Coachelli. Well actually they've maintained the one in Coachelli. So my 1k infantry regiment is useless here but in your case Coachelli might still be mothballed. Either way it is time to declare on them and we're gonna declare for Salonik right here. Of course we are gonna call in Albania with the promise of land 
but first we're gonna check which provinces of interest they have so we can see that they really desire Avalonia right here that's fine we're gonna click on ourselves and set these two provinces right here as provinces of interest this will help Albania transfer occupation of these two to us instead of occupying them for themselves and it is time to declare on the Ottomans like I said with a reconquest CB on Salonic and call in Albania now we're gonna send uh, 1k of these guys over here, of course once this battle is over I can't do that since it is fully maintained so I'm gonna send both of these guys to Gallipoli and I'm gonna send all of these guys to Salonic. Make sure it's the first of the month so we can catch the fort while it's mothballed. And there we go, two months have passed and I have captured Salonic. This is the fort you're most likely to capture and if you got Gallipoli and Coachelli it's just a little bonus but it's totally not necessary. This is our main deal right now. Now we're gonna be sending all of these these guys to Gallipoli. Once again, the entire army, we don't care about attrition, we just want the entire army there. You may have Gallipoli and Coachelli in your case too, but either way, at this point, we've achieved naval superiority already. Once our entire army is in Gallipoli, we are gonna naval barrage it. Now, once we've taken Salonic and Gallipoli, it is time to engage the Ottomans. So at this point, they have two separate stacks, right? They have the 14k and the 16k stack. And in my case, they have these 4k guys here too. That's fine. Now, if you can engage a stack separately, that would be excellent. But in my case, both of their stacks are in Constantinople. And I will engage on them. Just make sure you have a scanner bag in your army. And let's see how this battle actually goes. The main reason we were occupying Salonic and Gallipoli before engaging the Ottomans is the fact that they can't retreat back to Anatolia at this point. We have control of the sea and we have control of Gallipoli, so they can't cross over here. Wherever they retreat, it'll be on this side and we can keep fighting them until we stack wipe them and occupy the entirety of the Balkans and even cross into Anatolia later. And there we go, we've easily defeated the Ottomans. Now it's time to go siege everything. If you fought these stacks separately and not together like I did, you will be able to instantly stack wipe them. And as we can see, the Ottomans aren't retreating to Anatolia, they're probably going down here somewhere, that's fine. We'll start occupying everything from here, going down there and later fighting them in some nice terrain like the highlands or the mountains right here. Of course, as long as we control it before engaging them. As we can see in my case right now, the Ottomans are focusing on Athens, they might focus on Salonic or Athens in your case. They're probably not gonna go back and siege down Gallipoli or Constantinople. And if you fought the stack separately, like I said, they may even have only one stack left now. And this is my situation right now. I've just sieged down Adirne and everything else in the Balkans while the Ottomans are sieging down Athens. And now we're gonna engage them once again. Too bad Athens here hasn't joined, but it's still not a problem. Luckily, we still have Skanderbeg. Let's see how this battle goes where the Ottomans have nowhere to retreat to. And there we go, another battle won, and we'll just chase them into, well, wherever they're going. Right here, apparently. And there we go. Boom. The Ottomans now have 14k troops left. They're probably consolidating them over in Anatolia, in which case, it is time for us to cross over to Coachelli and Biga as well. At this point, if you want to... You can also naval bombard Coachelli and Shugla as well. It is totally not necessary, but uh, it will help speed up the war. So I will bombard Coachelli in my case. And once we have around above 80% war score with the Ottomans, it is time to piece them out. This war wasn't difficult at all. The only downside to it is we have a lot of loans and a lot of war exhaustion, but that's not a big deal. We will pay it off. And here's what we're going to be taking in this first war against the Ottomans. First, we're gonna take all their money. That is very important. Next, we're gonna take back all our cores except Edirne. That's easy war score for later. It is their capital. I'm not even gonna give back Avalonia to Albania because, well, even if I do, they still aren't gonna like me. So I'm gonna take one of these three provinces right here, whichever one you want. Kostendil, Ushkup, or Okri. One of those three. In my case, I'm gonna take this one. And that's pretty much it for your first war. So all the cores except Edirne and one province that you can release Bulgaria from, but that also borders Serbia. So one of these three right here. And there we go. Our first war with the Ottomans is done. Time to pay off a bunch of loans. Lower army maintenance. Turn off all our forts. Destroy the two expensive mercenary regiments. You can keep the free company. We're not gonna core the province we took from over here. And we're also not gonna release Bulgaria yet. First, 
we're gonna spy on Serbia and get a claim on one of these two provinces. Kosovo would be the best. After we get a claim on Serbia, then we're gonna be releasing Bulgaria. Now it's time to chill and wait for that Serbian spy network. At this point, you can start improving relations with some big countries that potentially would ally you. In my case, I'm gonna start improving with Austria. And after this war, we can also destroy the fort in Morea. We don't need it and it's kinda expensive. Once the war is done, we can also add some rivals. The nations that have rivaled me are Genoa, Naples and Venice, but I am gonna rival the Ottomans after after this war, probably Venice too to be honest, and Serbia as well because we do want to fight them. So as long as you rival the Ottomans and Serbia, you're good. Your third rival doesn't really matter, but it's nice if it's Venice. And once you can make a claim on Kosovo, it is actually time to release Bulgaria, even though they will receive this province. It's fine. And there we go, now we have a subject, they have a ton of cores that we can use to reconquer. And then the next war with the Ottomans, that is something we will be doing. But now it's time to chill a little bit more and then declare on Serbia. If your states have above 50 loyalty, and they should at this point, you can seize land once again. And once we've chilled a bit, it is time for a second war, which is gonna be against Serbia. You can try and co-belligerent some of their allies. In my case, I can co-belligerent both Bosnia and Herzegovina without calling in anyone else. So I'm gonna do that and see what I can take from them. And pretty much it's up to you what you take from Serbia in this war. Maybe you can take these provinces, vassalize the rest of them, full annex them, vassalize their ally. But it is very important to take Kosovo so we can get some income from gold. At this point, you can also swap your subjects from supportive to siege. Since we do have two subjects, by the way, Athens and Bulgaria, we can give out strong duchies to the nobility. And now that I've defeated Serbia, I am going to be taking these three provinces from them and vassalizing the rest of them. And I'm going to take as much money as I can. I did piece out these two guys for some ducats. We're going to be conquering them later. Don't worry about the aggressive expansion when fighting these uh, small orthodox nations because no one really cares. The only guys that will realistically join a coalition from us conquering over here so much is Serbia, Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina. Govina and Wallachia. Pretty much non-existent, so don't worry about that. And that's our second war done. Now we're gonna chill a little bit more, probably integrate Athens because 10 years might have passed and we're just gonna wait for truces to conquer some of these other guys over here like Bosnia, Herzegovina, Albania and maybe even get involved with Venice while we're waiting for a truce with the Ottomans to run out. Focus on building up your economy during this point. I have also managed to ally Hungary at this point. While we're chilling during this time and we have teched up to tech 4 in admin, diplo and mill, we can start devving up Constantinople a little bit to get it up to 30. Make sure the encouraged development state edict is on. And if you have the patriarch authority, you can hire the icon of Christ Pentocrator during this point. That gives us a further 10% discount in dev. During this time, you can conquer Epirus. Since we do have a core on one of their provinces, in my case, I'm not doing it because, well, they've allied Venice. But in your case, you should be able to take them out during this point, no problem. For your tier two government reform, I recommend taking strength and noble privileges. And I just got the province of Kios from Genoa because, well, separatists defected to me. Uh, that's pretty nice. It can happen to Cyprus, Kios, or Lesbos sometimes. And at this point, I've also allied Austria. These are good alliances to have. At this point, if you've defeated Epirus, you will have unlocked the mission Recover Greece, which gives you some permanent claims in the Balkans and in Anatolia. Of course, you will want to dev Kosovo up to 10 production to maximize your income from gold. Just make sure you hire an inflation reduction guy. If you don't have one, keep firing the level 1 advisors until you get one. At this point, we're still waiting for our truce with the Ottomans to run out, so just declare on whichever Balkan miner you can. In my case, I'm gonna declare on Bosnia and co-belligerent Wallachia right here. Maybe I can vassalize them. Basically, declare on whoever you want that's smaller than you. And here's what I'm gonna take in this war. I'm gonna separate piece Wallachia and vassalize them and take all their money. And I'm gonna be full annexing Bosnia and taking all of their money. You may be in a similar situation. Maybe you have all of Serbia, all of Bosnia, all of Herzegovina and you don't have Wallachia. Maybe you have Wallachia but don't have Bosnia. Pretty much something similar to this. But by this point our truce with the Ottomans should be up and we are gonna be getting ready to declare our second war against them. For your first idea group as Byzantium, I recommend taking religious ideas. This will help us out massively in converting all the provinces that aren't orthodox and help us achieve better stability in the long run. The stab cost is very nice, the prestige is excellent, we get a wonderful CB, the second best CB in the game, and the culture conversion cost minus 25% is pretty nice too, if we want to convert instead of accept. 
cultures. And once our truce with the Ottomans is up, we are going to be declaring our second war against them. Of course, a reconquest for our final core at Dirne. You could even call in some of your allies if you have the favors with them. I don't. But once again, you are going to want to station your fleet in the Sea of Marmara, activate the defensive edict in Thras, and just declare. We're gonna focus on sieging down the Balkans first and then crossing over and taking Coachelli and Biga. And in the second war with the Ottomans, we're gonna be taking Edirne, Coachelli, all of their money and giving back Bulgaria, well, as much as we can. And that's our second war with the Ottomans done. Time to shift our focus back to the Balkans. And now, we're even a great power. Nice. At this point, you can also start annexing any other subjects that you might have. For example, I'm gonna start annexing Serbia. Yes, I do know there are two cores left to reconquer from Hungary, but Hungary is a junior partner of Austria. And I will want to keep Austria as an ally for uh, quite a bit longer, at least until we get all of the Balkans and Anatolia. So that's why I started annexing Serbia. At this point, I'm also gonna declare on Herzegovina and finish them off. And of course, I'll be full annexing them. At this point I can also ally Muscovy, so I will do that. They will probably be a long-term orthodox ally of ours, since we have no intention of expanding there. And they're a pretty easy nation to PU, they don't royal marry a lot of nations, and uh, the rulers die pretty often. So yeah, I can say that I've PU'd Muscovy randomly by the way, not by declaring war, in about uh, 75% of my Byzantium campaigns. For your tier 3 government reform, you should take centralized bureaucracy. While you're hanging around and waiting for truces to expire, you can declare on Ragusa. Now it would be great if the Ottomans would join this war, so you can white piece them and reset your truce with them, but in my case they won't join. Either way, I'm still gonna declare on Ragusa. And of course I'm gonna fall annex Ragusa. If I was fighting the Ottomans, because they do guarantee Ragusa, I would white piece them to decrease the truce. And now we will be declaring on Epirus. It's unfortunate that they're allied to Venice. In your case, you've probably already taken care of Epirus. And of course we will be full annexing Epirus. Like I said, you've already did this like 30 years ago maybe. And you will have unlocked this mission, which gives us claims in these provinces. For your naval doctrine, you can take shipboarding or free oarsmen. I'm gonna take shipboarding. At this point, I did make Wallachia my march instead of a vassal. I don't plan to annex them anytime soon. It isn't an area that's of big importance to us, and I'll keep them around as a march for a while. And once our truce with the Ottomans is up, we will be declaring on them for our third time. It may be a little earlier for you if you fought them and white beast them when you fought Ragusa. And we're just gonna declare a reconquest for some of Bulgaria's cores once again. Station your fleet in the Sea of Marmara and siege down their coastal provinces and forts. And in this third war with the Ottomans, we're gonna be giving Bulgaria all their cores back and by this point they shouldn't be present in Europe anymore. And we're gonna be taking some coastal provinces in Anatolia that we have claims on, along with war reps and as much money as we can. And that's our third war with the Ottomans done. At this point, we may be able to fulfill some other missions as well, where we get claims on some more stuff too, like this mission Conquer Bulgaria, which gave me claims in southern Italy. Of course, at this point, you can start annexing Bulgaria. After you've finished up this war with the Ottomans, you can clean up some other Balkan miners or fight Venice to take some of their provinces in the Balkans or their islands in the Aegean Sea. In my case, I can't declare on Albania because they're allied to Poland and Austria and they're guaranteed by Venice, so uh, that would be a very difficult war. So that's why I'm gonna be declaring on Venice directly. And like I said, I will be declaring on Venice for Durats right here. I was just building up some favors with Bohemia to call them in and I will be co-belligerenting the Knights because we do wanna conquer the these islands right here as soon as possible. So Crete, Rhodes, this one from Genoa and these two from Venice and their subject Naxos. I'm also gonna call in Austria. And I am gonna be separate piecing the knights and full annexing them. And in this first direct war with Venice, I am gonna be taking all their Aegean provinces along with Corfu, Durazzo, Kataro right here and even these two up here along with some ducats. At this point, you may be able to unlock the decision Triumph for Greece. I think these uh, Triumph for insert area or insert region here are part of the Purple Phoenix DLC or flavor pack for Byzantium. And by around the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as Byzantium, uh, not a very powerful nation in 1444, but it's easier than ever in 131 to defeat the Ottomans and achieve superiority over them. By this point, you should have almost the entirety of the Balkans and a very 
solid foothold in Anatolia. Maybe you have a little less than me in the Balkans, but maybe you have a little more than me in Anatolia. Maybe you have a little less than me overall. That's fine if you're playing a bit slower, no problem at all. But we took some course to release Bulgaria, released them, reconquered all of their provinces, took Kosovo, the gold mine. Very important for us to get some early ducats going over there, especially after we devved it up to 10, stated it, and reduced autonomy all the way. In that same war, we also vassalized Serbia. By now, we've integrated them. We've taken out these two small nations, Bosnia and Herzegovina, in this region. We've taken out Ragusa. We've defeated Epirus, took back our cores. You probably have defeated Albania already as well. I haven't because, like I said, they're allied to Poland and Austria in my game. But you should have this as well. And we fought Venice and taken over all the provinces that are close to us from them. We also defeated the Ottomans three or maybe even four times in your case if you managed to white piece them and bring the truce down when fighting Ragusa. And we have a very solid foothold in Anatolia. Most importantly, we took Coachelli or Optima Toy, as has been renamed now, a very important fort that we will want to have early on. By this point, ducats aren't a problem anymore. We don't even have loans. Well, I have one loan in my case, but you won't be having any. We just need to bring inflation down a bit. That's why we want this inflation reduction guy all the time. If you don't get one, keep firing your guys until you get a level one inflation reduction guy. And we're going to keep working down our mission tree, which gives us vast claims all over the, well, Eastern Roman Empire and even in Italy and in Iberia as well. The mission tree also focuses on restoring the Pentarchy, where we need to own the five holy orthodox sites, Constantinople, Antiochia, Cairo, Jerusalem, and Rome. After that, you will mend the schism and everyone that likes you in Europe, well, they can go orthodox, so that's pretty sweet. And we also have some other nice missions which give us some nice modifiers and patriarch authority. Speaking of patriarch authority, you will want to maximize this and use icons as often as possible. You already know the icons by now and you will use them in according to what you need. As Byzantium, we also start off with one monument, Hagia Sophia. You will be focusing on upgrading it. It is pretty nice for orthodox nations especially. Once we've integrated Athens, we also have the Parthenon. We will also be focusing on upgrading this monument that might Minus 20% advisor cost is very nice paired with our starting tradition of minus 10 advisor costs and we will be getting the mausoleum at Holy Carnassus in Mentesha pretty soon. We will also be focusing on upgrading this one because that minus 5 tech cost is pretty sweet. After this point you will continue to expand mostly into Anatolia because we've already consolidated the Balkans. I do have Wallachia as a march like I said. I am integrating Bulgaria and I will be pushing into Albania pretty soon as soon as I can get rid of this Polish alliance. But I will be pushing into the Ottomans even more, taking out the smaller guys like Chandar, Karaman, Ramazan, Delkadir, Trebizond, Georgia, Akkuyunlu before facing the Mamluks, which are our biggest threat right now. But either way, you will be more powerful than them by this point, even if they have expanded into Anatolia like in my case. Sometimes they don't do this, even if we defeat the Ottomans. And you will continue to follow your mission tree, maybe even taking provinces in southern Italy, although bit by bit because they will be high AE, especially the valuable ones like Naples for example, so you won't be taking it all at once, but you will want to open up as many routes for expansion as possible. Like in the Pontic Steppe, in Anatolia, the Caucasus, the Mashriq and Egypt regions, maybe even push into Tunis, and you will be expanding outwards from the Balkans in this direction and from Anatolia going over like this, basically trying to re-establish the borders of the the Roman Empire. Of course by now I have been building a bunch of marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces, you can see the blue ones, and you will be building workshops in the high value trade good provinces such as glass, cloth, salt, and provinces like that, you already know them. You will be upgrading your centers of trade and you will be making Constantinople basically an end node by controlling such a big portion of Ragusa and routing everything into Constantinople. I do recommend expanding into Persia and into India, but if that's not your main goal and your main goal is forming the Roman Empire, well you should stick around the Mediterranean. Like I said, if you have the Purple Phoenix DLC, you have these nice little decisions which give us prestige and army tradition and stuff like that. They are pretty nice. For our first idea group, we chose religious ideas and for your second idea group, I recommend going with offensive ideas. We don't need quantity this early on since we do have some manpower bonuses in our national ideas and in the government reforms. So offensive for your second idea group to help you out with sieges. We also get some land force limit from it. Discipline is great and lots of general bonuses too. For your third idea group, I recommend going with trade ideas. This will help us make money even more and maximize all the trade we're going to be getting from all the trade nodes that we're going to be expanding in, routing it to Constantinople. And there's awesome policies with trade as well, like the one with religious, which gives us plus one missionary strength and plus 10% goods produced. 
because produced is awesome. For your fourth idea group, you can go with something like quantity or maybe even quality if you want to buff up your navy too and get some combat ability for your army regiments. The plus five discipline is great too. After that, it's pretty much your choice depending on what your plans are. You can go diplo or influence or economic for your fifth idea group. Maybe you can take another mill one for your sixth, even though you don't really need them. And pretty much after that, it's your choice. For your tier four government reform, I recommend taking meritocratic recruitment since that minus 10% advisor cost meshes really well with the minus 10 in our national ideas and we're going to be getting even more discounts from one of our monuments. For tier 5 I recommend taking royal decree, for tier 6 I recommend taking letas et moi, and for tier 7 I recommend taking political absolutism. Byzantium does have one unique achievement, Basilius, where you need to restore the Roman Empire, at least that's what the achievement says, but you don't actually need to form the Roman Empire to get that achievement. You just need to conquer the Balkans and Anatolia and you will get it. In my case, uh, I already have that achievement, but those are pretty much the requirements as you can see on the bottom of your screen right now. If you have alliances similar to me like Austria, Hungary, Bohemia and Muscovy, I do recommend keeping these guys around for pretty much the entire game. We aren't going to be expanding over here and we aren't going to be expanding into Austria a whole lot either. We're not very interested in the past or Vienna trade nodes. Of course, we do need Vienna to form the Roman Empire, but it's better to have these guys as allies long term and they can help you out in conquering Italy, the Maghreb, Iberia and France later on as well. So Austria is actually a pretty good ally to have. Just watch out when the war of the Protestant League happens because well you're automatically on their side if you're allied to them and you're gonna have to fight all their rivals. Probably someone like France and Castile and even Poland, Lithuania. And like I said by around the 1490s your realm should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine this save file is available to all YouTube members in the save games discord channel if you want to see me continue this campaign you can watch me on twitch.tv slash the red hawk live link is in the description let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that i should do a guide on if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 30 percent of you are subscribed and you can become a member today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video